Madam Speaker, I thank you for giving me an opportunity, and I rise to second that this House adopt um, the report on, on the financial operations of Homer Bay County Executive for the financial year 2013-2014, which runs from 1st of July 2013 to the 30th of June 2014. From the onset, Madam Speaker, I am still baffled. And I want to be very clear that uh, even though I'm a member of this committee, which by default I own up this report, uh, I think some of these audit queries would have been dealt with in a very different way, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as earlier on I said, I've always aspired to be an extremist when it comes to freedom and liberty and when it comes to fighting for a fiduciary responsibility. Madam Speaker, I've gone through the report and I hope that now that this House is going to adopt this report, the recommendation of the committee that sat then, which uh, I really discussed in detail with uh, Senator Amos Wako, will be, re will be, will be um, implemented to the fullest. Madam Speaker, when you look at this report, and I hope that the Senator of Homerby, who is the chair of this committee, will be able to ensure that this recommendation in his capacity as the senator of Homerby are implemented. Because the fact that we do not have an implementation committee should not limit our ability to follow through and ensure that the recommendations of this house are implemented. Where there are instances of unlawful expenditures, and this, this uh, committee found that those officers should be surcharged and the money is recovered. That should not call for an implementation committee. Even ESCC and the DPP should follow through, get this report and ensure that, that those funds are recovered. Madam Speaker, when you are an extremist for freedom and liberty, you love the fact that people, money, are being misused without a proper accountability, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I've looked at this report, and one of the things that uh, I hope it is now the right time to do it is on the instances where procurement rules were not followed, but goods and services supplied as per the details of the requisition, this report recommends that officers be reprimanded for not following the public procurement rules and regulation and be required to submit a report to the Senate on administration action and austerity measures taken to mitigate against committal of similar offenses in the subsequent financial year. Yes, Madam Speaker, given that this is 2013-2014, it would have meant that in the next financial year, 2014-2015, we should, this House should have been given a report and told that, hey, this is what, these are the actions that we took. When I look at this report, Madam Speaker, which is, a sh it's a shame that we are the ones now to table this report. I noticed that it was signed by none other than Boni Halwale, who was the chair of that committee then. And I think it was signed way back in 2015. So I think there's nothing that stopped that committee, even though the report had not been tabled, to ensure that they follow through and even work together with the Public Account and Investment Committee on the county government, in the, in the national assemblies, in the, in the county assemblies. So Madam Speaker, I am I'm still at a loss of words because now that we are looking at 2013, 2014, what happens to the subsequent years where similar recommendation. And it is clear, we know that in the county assembly of Homer Bay, there are certain officers who are arrested by ESCC. Maybe ESCC should have extended their arm and also looked at the executive arm of the county government of Homer Bay. Because if this was happening in one office, there's no reason as to why it was not happening in the others. Madam Speaker, this report really, and I hope that Kenyans out there and this is when I, 
I plead, even with the Senate, to ensure that we put these reports out there in the public domain immediately after this. Put it in the Senate website. Kenyans from Homer Bay, look at the report. Go back. It doesn't matter whether the current governor concludes his term in a few years to come, in 2022. The fact that money was lost, he should be responsible for it. There's something called a fiduciary duty, a fiduciary responsibility. There's, you cannot explain why people are still languishing in poverty. I'm, I am really uh, not a very happy man today, Madam Speaker, because tabling of this report has come in when Kenyans are crying. When Kenyans are saying, no, we don't want to be taxed. But then, where are we going to get money if the money is going? The similar, I gave a similar analogy in the issue of Kilifi. But on this report, Madam Speaker, I seriously do hope that the senator, my good friend, Moses Kajuang, who is my chair, very able chair, will be able now to move us to combine all the reports for Homabe. We look at 2015, 2016, and we compare with 2013, 2014, so that we see whether certain actions were put in place. If they were not, then of course, nothing stops you or even our committee from demanding that those officers be surcharged, that if in the event that money was lost, that money is recovered. Madam Speaker, that is the only way that we'll be able to achieve our objective and to be able to fulfill our duty as enshrined in Article 96.3 of the Constitution. We must defend the interest of counties and their governments. Government does not mean that one person is government. It means that future governments will come, play, will come in place. If tomorrow, Madam Speaker, my good friend Moses Kajuang becomes the governor of uh, Homabe, he will inherit a lot of uh, debt that he will not be able to know how to pay because everything which was being done in 2013, 2014, and I bet even today, was through restricted tender. How do you then come out there and tell the people of Homabe that even though we use restricted tender, the people of Homabe got value for money? So, Madam Speaker, I agree with the other members. I agree with Senator Sakaja when he said that we need to change. And I want to assure Senator Sakaja and other members of this House that this committee now, when it is interrogating these matters, it is only that we could not be able to reopen this file because it had already been adopted by the committee members. And our work was now to table, debate it. But just like what Senator Kajuanga said, nothing stopped this House from amending the reports. And I think the Auditor General, and I want to reiterate this again, Madam Speaker, the Auditor General must now look at the law. The Public Audit Act, Section 62, is very clear. Otherwise, this is going to be a never-ending circle where we are talking about how the money is being misappropriated, when we are fighting uh, Treasury, because even in this report, Treasury is blamed for releasing money late. I wish, I, I would even support the money to be released late rather than releasing the money early and that money cannot be accounted for. So, Madam Speaker, we've got the rule of law. The PFM Act is very clear, you know, in terms of reconciliation, in terms of accountability. So, there's no excuse as to why this House now should not look at these reports and even, you know, any member can say, no, let us visit Homabe, let us look at what was said to have uh, been uh, done in 2013, and I hope that my good friend Amos Wako would be able to tell us. Madam Speaker, with those many remarks, I beg to second. Honorable Senators, I now propose the question that this House adopts.